Yo, what's going on guys? It's Houston Sports Talk back in another video day and today we're going to be recapping day three of NBA free agency. Today was a very, very quiet day in NBA free agency. There were a lot of rumors going around and uh, but not a lot of big moves and, and we're going to, even though it's not a lot, we're going to go over uh, what happened today in the NBA because there were some other things that happened that did not involve free agency. So I'm going to go over all of it. All right, let's get into it. Uh, starting off with this morning, um, so there were a couple rookie, ex, you know, s signings that happened. Nothing, you know, it, all of these are expected. Like um, Stefan Castle signed his his you know rookie deal. Bron James signed his multi year contract, which is ridiculous. A um, couple Dalton Kinnett signed his contract. Reed Shepard signed his contract. So all these guys getting rookie deals. But you know, here's where. You know, the other surprising stuff starts to happen. Starting off with this morning, we have Colin Gillespie, who is a former Denver Nugget on a two-way contract, has signed a two-way two, two contract with the Phoenix Suns. Uh, so he's going from Denver to Phoenix. Then more bigger news, Donovan Mitchell has signed a three-year, $150 million max contract extension with the Cleveland Cavaliers that includes a 2027-28 player option. I mean that's a great deal for the for Donovan Mitchell and the Cavaliers, and I'm excited to see uh, how how this Cavaliers team looks next year, and if they can potentially improve their team a little bit. Then we saw first actual free agency signing. The Indiana Pacers signed James Wiseman to a two year contract. I like this deal for the Pacers. James Wiseman had a solid season. I know people will hate on him because he was the second overall pick, but if you just look at it as a backup center, if you look at it, you know, if you view it as okay, this is someone who is a backup center and not the former second overall pick. James Wiseman averaged seven points per game, six rebounds per game, and I believe one block per game as well, and only started. In six games, came off the bench 17 minutes per game. The Pacers need a center uh, or a backup center to be more specific after losing Jalen Smith to Chicago. And I like this addition for Indiana. Next, we, we have some retirement news. Kimball Walker has called it a career after uh, I, I think it was 11 or 12 seasons that he was in the league for. I'm not 100% sure on that. He last played in the 2022 23 season with the Dallas Mavericks, playing nine games, was not on an NBA team this year, the 23-24 season was playing in Monaco. Uh, he played for the Knicks, he played for the Hornets, and he played for the Celtics. Next, we saw Monte Morris, who played for the Detroit Pistons and the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves last year, sign a one-year $2.8 million contract with the Phoenix Suns. I love this signing for the Suns. They need a point guard really bad. Obviously, I think Monte Morris could start off as the backup point guard, but for the Suns, who it's been reported they want a true point guard on the roster, Monte Morris is that, and I really believe that, you know, uh, Monte Morris, if, if Phoenix is a little bit unhappy with Bradley Beal or Devin Booker at point guard, they very well could move Monte Morris into that starting lineup, um, slide Beal to the two, slide Booker to the three, and uh, obviously I think that means Durant and and Nurkic would be four and five. So that I, I think the odd man out obviously there would probably be Grayson Allen. He'd probably head to the bench if if at one point they make Monty Morris the the starting point guard. But it's not like he's hasn't been a starting point guard before. He was the starting point guard for the Washington Wizards in the 2022-23 season. And guess who was the shooting guard next to him, which would be the starting shooting guard next to him in this lineup, Bradley Beal. He was the starting point guard for the Denver Nuggets in the 2020-21 season while Jamal Murray was still rehabbing uh, his ACL injury. So he's had a perfect, and perfect experience at the starting point guard position for Denver and Washington in prior seasons. He's a good three-point shooter. He's a good scorer. He's a good facilitator. I like this signing. Next, we have Boston bringing back Xavier Tillman into a two-year, $4.78 million deal. I like this. I think this could be a potential Al Horford replacement. Obviously, Al Horford's still in the Celtics, but let's be honest. He only has a year or two left in him. I think Xavier Tillman reminds me a little bit like Al Horford. If they can develop his three-point shot a little bit, he is exactly like Al Horford. Next, we saw Jonathan Isaac sign a five-year, $84 million contract. I hate this deal. Uh, they're giving $17 million to a guy like Jonathan Isaac, who, yes, is a great player. He's a good scorer. He's a very solid three-point shooter. Great shot blocker. But let's not act like this was the first time John Jonathan Isaac's been healthy in forever. Um, he played only 11 games a season before. And the two seasons before that, 
he only he didn't he didn't play at all. Uh, in the season before that, he only played thirty four games. Jonathan Isaac has only had two healthy seasons out of seven years being in the league. Has only played five out of seven years being in the league. So in seven potential seasons he's played in, he's missed two of them, and he's only been fully healthy. Or you know, I don't know if I'd say fully healthy because the the two seasons he's been healthy. One season he missed seven games, the other he missed 24. So look, this guy is a monster when he's on the floor. And if if he was on the floor 100%, I'd be okay with this signing. And I'd probably say he needs more money. He needs a lot more money, but that's not the case. He can't stay healthy. And to give someone $17 million to, who, who doesn't stay healthy, I don't understand the point of giving that type of money or that type of extension to someone who cannot stay healthy. I hope for the Magic's sake, because I want them to succeed, that they don't get themselves into a into an S show. Uh, because if they if they do, this is a dangerous contract. This is a long contract. This is a contract that that has a lot of money in it with with seventeen million. So seventeen million a year. So uh, this is dangerous. Um, but I hope he stays healthy because he's a good player. He's a good shot blocker. He's a good scorer. He's a good. Re- he's a great rebounder, and he's a decent three point shooter. I want him to stay healthy for the Magic, for his sake and Orlando's. All right, next we have a sign in trade. Kyle Anderson is going to the to the Golden State Warriors. Go- Golden State Warriors are signing him to a three or twenty seven million dollar deal. I love this deal for Golden State. Um, now I'm going to go over the sign in trade details, then I'll go back to Kyle. The Warriors are trading a second round pick. That um, that also comes with a cash consideration. It's a second round pick swap, and they are also giving them cash considerations. So cash and a second round pick swap. Kyle Anderson is a great facilitator. He's a great passer and a great playmaker. Yes, he's not a great shooter, but he also I want to mention in his career has shot thirty four percent. Even though this year had his worst three point shooting season of his whole career. Even though he's not a good scorer, he still averaged over six points per game. He's a good rebounder, and he's a great facilitator. As a power forward, he averaged four assists per game. He's one of the best point forwards in basketball. Um, so he, he's like an extra point guard on the floor, but at the same time, he is your power forward. I love this signing for Golden State. If, if I, I've, I've seen so many people say they don't like the signing, and then they get flamed, and, and everybody tells them exactly why this signing is perfect for Golden State. So Kyle Anderson will fit well with Golden State. Let me know your thoughts on day three of free agency because that's literally it. Not much going on in day three. Kyle Anderson uh, to Golden State, Monte Morris to Phoenix, James Wiseman to, um, to, to, to Indiana, and also one more signing I, meant, I, I, I missed. Mo Wagner is returning to the Orlando Magic on a two-year, $22 million deal. Average 11-4 and four last year. That's the one signing I did miss. Let me know your thoughts on... Day three in the comment section and peace out.